Okay. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to the Land and Home Show. And we're talking all about what makes the bluegrass special. And uh, keep watching. I'm Stephen J.B. Davis, your land specialist and resident realtor here in Central Kentucky and beyond. And today I'm joined by the bluegrass queen herself, Marie McClam. She didn't know I was going to say that, but that's kind of how I think of her. <laughs> um, she's got her foot and hands and eyes and, and lots of things all over the bluegrass. And I cannot wait for you to hear more about what she does and, and why she does it. And so um, start with the who. Who are you and where are you from? I'm originally from Lexington. Okay. I'm a Lexingtonian. Um, lived here all my life. I did move away for a little while and yeah. I went down south. Um, and I feel like that even gave me more Kentucky pride because oh, yeah. there wasn't blue everywhere. There wasn't UK everywhere. There wasn't <laughs> right. Kentucky and horses and rolling farms everywhere. Yeah. So um, it wasn't too much longer after I moved back that I was like, I got to do this blog. I really want to put this out here and share it with people. Yeah. So what is your blog, Marie? I mean, I know what it is, but tell everyone watching, <laughs> what is your blog? Sure, it's backroadbluegrass.com, and I'm going into my sixth year. Wow. Uh, about 130 blogs so far, thank you. Nice. <laughs> it's a lot of blogging. Uh, yeah, uh, But so. it is about everything all over Kentucky. It's okay. about my passion to share just anything and everything about Kentucky. Um, I'm kind of a fan of the artists, the small business owners, the small towns, mm -hmm. uh, all that kind of thing. So you'll see that just woven constantly through oh, all of my blogs. I love that. I love that because, so what intrigues me about you is just um, the local support, like where I'm from, it was so easy to get involved in local things or buying local and entrepreneurship. And when I moved here, I felt like what I was immediately met with was a lot of change and a lot of it took me a while to understand that there there is a local fabric here and a lot of local value and you make it really easy to figure that out and really easy to find that and then Thank in my you. job of course people are like well where should i live and you know i'm never like you should live here it's more like what do you like doing and what do you like to see and where do you like to be and, and that kind of thing and um you just have a really good roadmap to to allow people to understand what they're getting into when they get into kentucky and i would say it's it's overwhelmingly great stuff you know mm -hmm. people not from here may think differently and it's usually because they're uninformed right yeah, um, but I'm it's hungry. a it's a great place uh -huh. and so i just i appreciate what you do on on many levels Thank it helps you. me in my job it helps me understand places that i hadn't been and it helps the people that i help um and it's fun yeah it's very very fun so six years you've been doing this mm -hmm. and what is like what do you think makes, I mean, you can talk about Kentucky generally or the bluegrass or whatever, but like, what do you think makes this place so special? I mean, in six years and also growing up here, mm -hmm. you must have a, a few patterns you've seen around the state. Sure. Um, Lexington specifically, I really love because you get the culture and the art um, without getting the huge city mm -hmm. and the industry, because since our industry is horses, it comes with the rolling fields and yeah. all the beautiful things and it doesn't come with the industry as much as the pollution and the huge buildings and all that so i really love lexington for that reason because there's so much culture you can find art around every corner True. theater everything yep. here um so lexington specific that's why i love about that kentucky in general i think it's gorgeous i think it's full of really friendly people um and just amazing people, talented people. I work a lot with artists and I'm constantly amazed at how much talent we have in this area. And when you think about COVID, I know this happened all over, but the ability of businesses to pivot rather than just keep doing what they were doing and go out of business. Uh -huh. You know, they pivoted and they made something different happen. And um, so I was, I mean, I was thrilled with that, that there was businesses that were able to stay open that I was like, uh oh, I'm not sure, you know, this drink truck is gonna make it yeah. <laughs> through COVID. What are they gonna do? And they started doing, um, you know, make your own margarita, make your own whatever, mm -hmm. and delivering it to the house and making it teachers' gifts and nurses' gifts and all these yeah. things. And they just made it happen. So yeah, that was like set the bar. They really made it happen. Yeah, and I, I think too, off of what you're saying, the um, 
the fact that this is a state really made up of so many small places mm -hmm. like Kentucky is we've got Louisville as our largest city as you know but maybe you don't and we've got here which is like 330,000 people everything else is smaller so almost by definition so much of what we have here is supported by the the community not necessarily by a big giant business you know we've got the horses and we've got Toyota we, we have all of these things that kind of uphold us from an employment standpoint but then people live in all these small communities that they get to know the people that own their grocery stores they get to know the people that you know gave them the beef and I just I think that that's very cool yeah 100% and when it comes to the farmers market I mean there's a farmers market in almost every small town yeah, my there first is. vlog was about the Lexington farmers market right downtown <laughs> Um, you know, that's, that's really amazing. I just yeah. love our farmers and that's getting ready. Well, it's our Lexington one in downtown is always open, right. uh, but the one on Southland's getting ready to open this weekend. I didn't weekend. know there was one in Southland. Southland Drive. Oh, no yes. Way. Okay. Yeah, they have, Lexington Farmer's Market has four or five markets a week. So almost every day of the week you can find a farmer's market. Seriously? There. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know of the one in Hamburg, one of, uh, one of my husband's friends, they're not friends, cousins, they go to the Hamburg one mm -hmm. and they have the most amazing strawberries and peaches <laughs> actually. Um, they're down from they're from Alaska County. And corn. They have amazing corn. They just have an amazing everything. Anyway, yes. I did not know that you could find a farmer's market in town every almost, almost every, every day. day. Yes. Uh -huh. That's pretty insane. Yeah. What do you think would surprise someone who's never been here? Whether they're looking to move here or they're just like, well, why would I visit there? A lot of people drive through our state. A right. lot of people fly over our state. Uh -huh. What would surprise them if they decided to stay for more than just gas or the um, fast food thing? Well, you know, everybody thinks Kentucky, they think horses, and I think bourbon. And yes, it's wonderful. And <laughs> True. You, you do got to experience that. Yeah. Yep. Um, but I'm going to say, well, one, while you're here, take the back road. Take the back road whenever you can. Take Old Frankfurt Pike. It's gorgeous. Um, but things that I think are kind of unusual in this area, like Red River Gorge, is bomb. Yes. Bomb yes. for hiking, um, for zip lining, for rock climbing. They've got treehouse uh, B and B's. Yep. They've got you can stay on the side of a mountain. Just great amazing. barbecue. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and really, here's the thing about Slade and the area of, of uh, um, Red River Gorge that surprises me. You know, there's not a lot of restaurants around there. But the ones that are there, they don't take it for granted. They have really good food. Yep. Um, and so you go down there, you can have great food, stay overnight, stay a few days, yep. get in your, your climb and all that stuff. And it's, I mean, there's just endless trails. Yeah. If you get tired of them, go the opposite way. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. I could not agree more. I could not agree more. So you have the Bluegrass Creatives Market. Yes. And I want to hear about that because that is, that really speaks to you supporting local like in the most direct way uh -huh. it's not just that you shop local like you're really you've got this whole vehicle to support mm -hmm. local artists and local makers local creators so yeah. tell us more about that um, well, I would say that started out of my love not only for shopping small but my family my sisters and I were all artists oh so I used to be on the other side of it oh, which okay. I think gives me a great advantage that yeah. I've been on both sides so uh -huh. I kind of have a good idea of what the vendors would want mm -hmm. and then I've been a bit coordinator for a million years um, so I've got that you know the logistics and that kind of thing and the marketing going behind it but um, so we pop up four times a year we were originally popping up on Southland Drive right next to the <laughs> farmers market gotcha. then we grew into a two-day market so we're Saturday Sunday now and for the first time we are trying out the summit yeah, yeah. so the summit on Nicholasville Road we will be April 15th and 16th so Think of tax day, but it's going to be a lot better than tax day. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed it will. And so what will people find there? What I mean, is, everything. There? We'll have about 50 vendors, food trucks, drink trucks, um, leather, woodwork, clothing, stickers, graphic design, hand-painted items, pottery, I mean, everything. And we're inside the barn at the summit, and then okay. we're also out back in the whole adjoining parking lot. So okay. we've got quite a few vendors there we pop up four times a year we do april june september and then we have our holiday market in november nice yeah i will not miss the next one all right i'll miss april <laughs> but i will i will not miss the next one and for those of you that will be visiting between april 15th and 16th the summit does have an open container allowance so they you do. can sip and shop and buy the art and 
you know, do all of the things uh, with something refreshing in your hand if you are a drinking person and of age. Um, if we move away from that, I'm curious to know what you think your favorite part about live like not just living in Lexington but like what is your favorite experience or your favorite thing to do your the most valuable part mm -hmm. of living here like what is that core thing yeah. about Kentucky for you my jam is visiting small towns and you can drive a half hour you can drive an hour and you will go to a town and not feel like you're in Kentucky uh, I love river towns so yeah. the Maysville's you yeah. know the Northport the Northport yeah um, those ones, Frankfurt even, these ones on the river are really cool. Louisville, you can walk over to Indiana, over the bridge, which I love. But I love river towns okay. and just a small town vibe. The thing that's so cool about small towns and small businesses is you walk into a store, I'm going to say eight out of ten times, there might be an owner there. I mean, go into Target and go, can I talk to the owner? I, you know, <laughs> right. I got a problem. Not going to happen. <laughs> So, I mean, the passion that's there with them, mm -hmm. a lot of times, you know, it's family owned, generationally owned. These people are so invested in their businesses. Yeah. And so you just want to be a part of that yeah. and, you know, support them. So I always get psyched with, with the local businesses. So what's your, uh, not to leave anyone out, but if you had to like rank right now, your top three oh, no. favorite towns, cause I, I kind of know what mine are. I love Cynthiana. Like oh, yes. I think that Cynthiana is just mm -hmm. so very cool. Um, I also happen to love Maysville. Yes. And I also really, really like, um, oh gosh, what is the name of that place? Oh, Berea. Mm -hmm. Because the hiking and the, you know, and the college and the history. So great hiking, th great Those are three there. of those places that I've always <laughs> like, yeah, those, they do it for me. Right. Those yeah. Those are three of my favorite small It's ones. incredibly hard for me to narrow <laughs> stuff down like that. I know. I told you I was going <laughs> to ask you hard questions and then here I am asking you one. Um, I agree with the ones you said. I love Cynthia, and especially in the fall. They go buck wild in the fall. So it's a really cool place to go then. Um, I love Owensboro. Oh, yeah. Owensboro is yeah. known for bourbon and bluegrass. And the river. <laughs> and the river. Of course. I do have the river Do you like thing. to swim? Are you like a... Well, yeah, do I don't like, swim in the river. Well, sure, no. But like, <laughs> like, do you just like have a love of water yeah, in I general? I love to be near water more than in it. In it. Okay, fair but enough. I love having it close by. <laughs> So Owensboro is super cool, um, and let's see, I just recently went to Elizabethtown, I was really digging that, just um, the area down around town, they had a really cool speakeasy there. I've never been to Elizabethtown, yeah. I'll have to check it out. That was fun, um, let's see, I love Georgetown, downtown Georgetown's wonderful. Local feed. Yes. Such yeah, good Yeah, I gotta food. go to local feed. Local feed is great. <laughs> I blogged about it, look it up. <laughs> Look up in my blog, if you go to the homepage, there's a search bar, put in anything you're interested in. I love this. I'm going to stick this on my website. Or bourbon or horse. Yes. Anything I've written about oh. will come up and then I you can that. read about it. I love that. Um, last question. Okay. If you, and I oh. told you about this one ahead of time. And I still don't I've know. been distracting you. <laughs> um, so if you could meet anyone living or passed on part of Kentucky history, mm -hmm. Who would they be? Okay, so one person I would love to meet that was part of Kentucky history, she was born in Lawrenceburg. Her name was Willa Brown. Wow. She was the first African American, not just male or female, but first African American period, period. to get her okay. pilot's license. What? So I would just love to know, you know, in such what must have been a male dominated field. Yeah, still with, is. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, at that point in time when she did that, I would just love to pick her brain and know what she went through, what she had to overcome yeah. to do that. that could and why not did have she want to be a pilot? I mean, yeah. <laughs> planes were so new and weird and foreign. I, I mean, think she must have been super cool. So yeah. I want to I want to talk to her. All right. I like that. Is there anything that you would like to add or let everybody know out there? I mean, um, they'll certainly know how to find you by the end of this. I'm not yeah. ever going to keep people from... From finding my guests um, so yeah just anything that, that folks should know I will say on my uh, blog it's typically on Instagram I'm bluegrass blog I do a lot of super awesome giveaways mm -hmm. and a lot of times they're tied to my blogs so you know if I if I write about Cynthiana 
then you mm. might get a stay, a B&B stay there, and a dinner, and you know, oh, a movie or wow. something. Okay. So uh, I put those out quite a bit because I just want to plant the seed in people's mind that somewhere in Kentucky nearby is a great vacation destination, and you don't have to spend a lot of cash, you don't have to spend a lot of time. You can even make it a day trip, come back, but you can really experience some cool things visiting small town Kentucky. I love that. Well, I hope that you've learned something today. I certainly have. Uh, my goal is to always help you understand more about this place, whether you're looking to move here, vacation here, uh, or something in between. Yeah, do it. <laughs> Whatever it is that you're looking for, um, I always want to bring you value and people that are way smarter than I am with, uh, with a lot of this stuff. So until next time, adios. Thank you for watching. And uh, you can get in touch with Marie McLam down below in the description. Adios. Thank you.